What's up everyone, it's DV. So I am going to show you in this video how to use OBS Studio for recording your game. So I actually use this for Roblox, I use it for Core, I use it for any game that I'm going to record gameplay on. It doesn't It doesn't even have to be Roblox, it can be anything. It can also be even just this kind of stuff. You can record your desktop, you can set it up any way you want. Now, OBS does support Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, most of you are probably gonna be on Windows. Some of you are gonna be on Mac, but most of you are gonna be on Windows. So I'm gonna only be showing the Windows tutorial, but the Mac should be very, very similar as far as setup and just, you know, recording settings and such. So this is what OBS looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and install this first. So we're gonna go and download. All right, so this is gonna look a little weird now that I've got it installed. Um, I, I am gonna show you a couple things. This is actually my version here. And it is gonna look a little weird, like I said, because it's recording my desktop. So you're gonna see this, like this really crazy looking psychedelic screen here. So it's just recording the screen over and over and over and over. So you got this kind of like infinite mirror going on, which is kind of cool if you, you kind of play with it a little bit if you want to. But here's how it's set up. So when we go in here, you're going to see something like this. This is probably going to be blank right here as well as sources. So what I do is I actually have all these different uh, little scenes here. So this is like I can zoom into my face so I can show their webcam scenes. I could show game only. I can sh I can pretty much these are all different like modes. So like if I have different overlays, for example, so maybe if I have like sounds or if I have like maybe an image up here, then I can actually switch between those different scenes. Consider this like different web pages. So you, I could show this page, that page, that page. They're all configured differently. That's what scenes are. And then the sources are basically the elements that are in the scene. So here you can see I have a bunch of stuff that's hidden. So you can just kind of ignore all this. So if I were to like remove this, that's pretty much all you need. This is capturing the desktop. So you can pretty much create a scene. The way I usually do mine though, I don't usually do desktop. What I do is game only. So if you're going to record a game where well, you can you can you can record desktop but the problem is it's going to show your desktop right so you're going to see like all the stuff at the bottom here you're going to see you know clocks and i actually think it looks really really cheap seeing these kinds of things you don't really want to see these top bars you don't really want to see windows you don't really want to see this kind of stuff and one thing you could do is you can you know change your taskbar settings and you can put like automatically hide the taskbar so it's not you know in your recording if you have to do it at least do that so if you can't like at least make it so that it's only recording the game just at least hide the you know the taskbar and the way you do that is you just right click on your taskbar if you're using windows and then you go there and then it see how it says automatically hide the taskbar in desktop mode that will just toggle that so that it automatically hides you know and and it's actually it, it definitely saves a lot of pain just visually so i'm going to go ahead and um, turn it off for now but because i'm not going to do it this way i'm going to actually show you how to do it for a game so i'm going to so i'm going to go ahead and load up roblox here so let's go ahead and load this and you can see it's still recording while i load right so you can see the game so you can see it's still recording now one of the things you're going to see here though is it does say display capture so we're still seeing the display but here's the thing we don't want to we don't want to record the display what we want to record is the game regardless of where we're at right we don't want to be seeing this stuff if you're toggling between things or copy and pasting between things you want to continue showing the game so you don't actually use game capture what i use is window capture the problem with game capture is that certain games just don't support this sometimes they get a little bugged um sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't i find window capture is more reliable so what you do is you click on that and it's going to show you all the different um, windows that you've created in the past you can kind of just ignore these what we're going to do is we're just going to call this roblox so i'm creating a new source here that's called roblox i'm going to click ok so it's already smart enough to know that we've already selected this right so you see you're going to see only roblox right now but if i switch this out but if i switch this out you can kind of see a little bit of the blend this is what i see right behind it this is the app that i'm using this is what i'm seeing but you're only going to see whatever the application is recording so i'm going to go ahead and turn this back off now of course you know it automatically selected roblox during that time so here is what it looks like if you are trying to select a different window so you can see all the different windows that are available so i can actually show you know the web page again that we just were at so these are pretty much all the applications that are currently open on my computer so you can check out the you know it's the roblox page and things like that in this case we have it like this and if we clicked okay then that is the source so i'm gonna you know this is it with it on this is with it off right so all i'm doing is toggling this little eyeball which toggles the visibility of something. So if I do that, then there's that, okay? The other thing I can do is actually drag this around. So you can see here, I'm actually dragging the corner of this and I'm stretching it. So I'm just moving this around. And I'm just basically selecting this little top left. Now, if you kind of squish that like that, it looks really, really bad, right? You could even do that on accident. What, happen what happens, how do you fix this? Because you're gonna do this and you're gonna be like, how do I fix that? Well, you can either right click on the source here or the actual like 
the actual like object inside the scene. In this case, it's just we're just going to right click on the source here and we're going to click on transform and reset transform. Transform basically means anything that you're changing visually about something. So you can center it, you can stretch it, you can flip it, you can rotate it. Um, you can paste it, you can edit, you can copy. In this case, we're going to go and reset it. And now you can see it's full. You, know, you, you can't even see OBS right now because I did that. So we're going to go and, un and reset that. But now you're like, great, great DV. But what about, you know, recording? Because, you know, I get how to use this now. I get that, you know, I, I've got Roblox open. I've got, or whatever my game is, I've got the application open. So here's what you need to do. Right here on the bottom right, you see settings. There's also start streaming. And um, in your case, you're going to see start recording. I'm actually already recording using this application right now. So it says stop recording. So if I stop that, then you would no longer see the video. So I'm not going to do that. But in this case, yeah, you're going to go to settings or um, um, either through here or you can go up to the top left here under file and then settings right so now you're gonna see this now you see um, the settings panel and you see general stream output audio all this kind of fun stuff all we care about even though you, I know you want to go over to video and you can go to video just make sure you set your out your resolution my monitor set at 1920 1080 if you've got a 4k monitor and a beast of a computer you can actually bump that up even higher so if you got a 4k go for it um, I only, I, I don't really like doing that. HD is plenty fine for me. I don't need to start recording 4K yet. So in this case, I'm recording at 1920, 1080. And then I don't have any downscale going, you know, cause it's, it's pretty much straight up. Now, if 1080 is too much for your computer, you can scale down your output. So you're gonna keep your base canvas at resolution at whatever your resolution is. And then your output's gonna be scaled down to 720 most likely. Um, I can't edit this right now. See how it says output is currently active. It's cause I'm recording right now. And I can't actually change the recording midway because that'd make two different videos, right? How can you make a 1080 video and a 720 video in one? No, the only output that we can do is whatever is set here in the first place. So the, the tab you care about here is output. So within output, you're gonna see streaming and you're gonna see recording. You can ignore audio and replay buffer. Streaming is only good if you're gonna stream. So if you're gonna stream, the thing I would look at is really just making sure your rate control is at CBR, constant bit rate. And um, that is nice for Twitch. So Twitch really likes constant bit rate. But I'm gonna get into more of these details later in a future video. So keep an eye out for that on how to stream and how to use OBS for streaming. In this case, we are focused here on recording. So you're gonna click on the recording tab and you can see here I've got basically a type. The only thing that I've changed here is gonna be the type of video. So right here, you're gonna see recording format. I have it as MP4. I think by default, it does record FLV format. And you wanna change that. The reason being is FLV is not supported by many applications. You're gonna to wanna to switch that to MP4. MP4 is the most supported um, file format by pretty much web browsers, mobile browsers, pretty much HTML5 is MP4. You're gonna to wanna to go with MP4. And you can see here I'm using NVIDIA's NVNC. Now because, and that is because I do have an NVIDIA GPU. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, go for it, use this. There's other encoders in here that you can use as well. I can't actually select those right now because I'm actually recording, but you can see here it is actually selected as the new version. So the newer version of the H.264 is actually um, a little bit more optimized. I don't know the exact details on this, but in my tests, it looked better. So I would just go ahead and stick with that. Um, you can also rescale your output. Um, I'm not gonna do that in this case. Um, and then the rate control. So I use variable bit rate. And the reason why is it's able to go up and down a little bit easier. I was doing CBR for a bit, and I've also tried lossless. Lossless just gets really crazy. So what I use is VBR. So I put it at 20 megabits per second or 20,000 kilobits per second. And the reason why is I tested it and tested it and tested it. The 20,000 kilobits per second seemed like it gave me the best quality for the cost of file size. So the file size is actually pretty mediocre. The file size is pretty good, it's decent. You don't really see a whole lot of quality loss until you start getting into low light situations where things are very dark or there's a lot of action. So if it's dark and there's a lot of action. Sometimes it does start art artifacting, especially if it's trying to keep up with it. Um, but what I've noticed is 20,000 is actually a really, really good number. Um, you can go lower. I think I've, I've bought it. I think I've brought it down to maybe like even 12,000 or 12 megabits per second. And it was, it was, it was still okay, but you can start seeing the degradation inside quality. So I'd definitely recommend sticking around 20,000, especially if your computer can handle it. Now this has nothing to do with internet. Just a reminder, this has nothing to do with internet right now because you are not sending anything anywhere over 
over the internet. So your Wi-Fi, you can have your internet disconnected if you're recording your screen. If you're playing a single player game that does not require any kind of internet, you can keep it as high as you want for your bit rate. It's not gonna make a difference. That's only gonna be important if you're over here streaming. In that case, your bit rate here is gonna wanna be lower for lower connections, right? If so if your internet's only two megabits per second up, you're probably gonna wanna keep this to like 1500 tops. And then that's tops. Um, you probably can't even stream at that kind of rate, but a lot of people do at two megabits per second. I mean, that's like crazy, crazy slow upload rates, but you need to know what your upload rate is. You can sh you can check that on speed test, but I'm gonna go into detail on that, like I said, in a future video. So here I'm going again back to variable bit rate. I, I found variable bit rate to be the best. It just seems like it gave me a little bit more. I used to try constant bit rate and it just, for some reason, it, it just didn't work as well. But here, keyframe interval, I kept it at three. Presets are max quality because we don't really want to lose any quality. Um, high profile, you can just leave it at that. After that, you're going to click OK and your settings are going to be good. And then you can just um, start and stop your recording. Now, inside here, you can see where I save my recordings. I do save them to a videos folder. So you can see I save them to DB videos. If you have an external drive, I would recommend saving to that instead. You just want to make sure you have enough space for these videos because these videos do take up a lot of gigabytes of, you know, maybe like 30 minutes of video is going to take up about three, three gigs. Pretty much for every 10 minutes, you're looking at about, about a gigabyte of disk space used. So that's pretty on par with all my videos, as long as there's a lot. And now, if it's a black screen constantly, then it's going to be a really, really small size. So it does depend on how much color is coming through, how, how vibrant of the game it is, how detailed it is, how much movement you've got going on where it's not able to compress it as well. In those situations, it's going to be a bigger file size. Now, if you're in a game where you're just pretty much AFK farming all day, you could probably, you could probably bring that down. You know, I've done like these time lapses. Like if you're going to do like a really, really like long time lapse. Time lapses, you don't need 20 megabits per second on. So what you could do is you can actually split your recording up so that, you know, maybe like you're doing something like this and you're doing like an intro and you're doing this at um, 20 megabits per second, right? So you're gonna run around, you're gonna do your intro and this is what I do. And then if I'm gonna time lapse for like 12 hours, well, there's no way I'm gonna be able to record that at 20,000 kilobits per second, it would kill my hard drive. So how do I do that? I would go back to OBS and I would change, I would split my recording so I'd stop that that intro recording and I would start a new one. The new one's actually going to have a different output bit rate though. The new one's gonna only be probably about, I would say 4,000 tops. 3,000 to 4,000 tops. Because what's gonna happen is if you're AFK farming and you're sitting here, maybe you're like in a chest or something situation, so you're just kinda like sitting there clicking, 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 clicking. You're not really moving, right? Say you're in front of this and this was like a clicker. If you're just sitting here for any reason for a long time, there's not a lot of data becoming, there's not a lot of data coming through, so you're not gonna see the, the quality degradation that you would if you were like running around doing this kind of stuff. If you're running around like this, then you're gonna need a higher quality bit rate. But if you're just standing there doing like clicks like an auto clicker for like 10 hours especially if you're auto afk like doing berries or something then you know or auto farming like trees or whatever then that then you don't really need to have 20,000 um, bit rate. You could keep it a lot lower and that way your file size stays really, really low. So, you know, maybe over an hour you hit a gigabyte. So you can pretty much record for eight hours overnight and you're gonna be at eight gigabytes maybe. So that's not as bad. You can actually handle that a lot better. And you know, on top of that, like I said, if you're just gonna do a time lapse, the quality doesn't really matter on the time lapse anyway, because you're barely gonna see any screens, right? It's gonna go so fast, you're not really gonna see anything. So that's why it doesn't really matter on the bit rate as so much for your time lapses. And then of course, the other thing you need to make sure you have sorted out is your audio. See how I've got my voice here? So you got your desktop audio and then you got your mic. So I use my mic. Um, now my mic actually does share the volume with the desktop just because I have a mixer and this is how I've got mine set up. But in this case with you, you might actually have like a headset, maybe you have like a Yeti or you have some other kind of microphone and, we, we're, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I will cover the different kinds of equipment that I use and I like to use um, for mixers, my microphone, all that kind of stuff. You will see videos coming up pretty soon on what I like to use and what I found to work really, really well for you know my streams, for recording my videos, all that kind of stuff. But in this case, I do have this set up this way and in your desktop audio can be separate. You may need to separate things. Now, one thing I will tell you, one thing I will recommend is to not record game music if you can help it because of copyright strikes on YouTube. So I would highly recommend, man, whenever you're going into a game, try to turn that off or or shut off Roblox's music or sound altogether. Now, on the exception of like something like Arsenal that doesn't have music, you know, except when those people like, you know, throw on their little radios and stuff, you can disable that stuff in Arsenal. 
But in the games that you know have music, I would highly recommend not allowing that them to play because a lot of the times you just don't have license to that and they will actually copyright strike you and you will not be able to monetize your videos. So make sure you turn that off um, and you can and you can always just mute your desktop audio and just keep your mic on. And then what I do is I layer my music in after I've done my recording and after I've edited. So all of my music is actually done post-processing within my editor and I'm gonna actually create a video on how I like to edit my videos and my entire process. So you can see here, you know, the little meter here is my voice. One thing I would recommend is not to ever let stuff start going into the red um, too much because it starts getting this like, you know, really, really loud, you know, and see how it's red now, it's too loud, too loud. So you wanna keep, you know, that pretty much within the yellow if you can, because you can always bump up the audio, the voice in your editing. You don't need to do that inside your recording tool. And so after you're done, you're pretty much going to hit, like I said, you're going to hit stop recording and then you're going to find your file and you can pretty much edit and it should be an MP4 format as long as, again, you set you set the recording output to be MP4. You don't want that to be FLV because FLVs are not typically supported by most video editors. Sadly enough, I have not found that many tools that actually support FLV, yet it is the default here. So again, you're going to want to make sure this is set to MP4 um, because it is like a universal format and then you're going to want to make sure your um, codec is set to H.264 because H.264 is the cleanest, it is one of the sharpest looking um, encoders. I've tried different encoders. I've done a lot of different tests. I found this is just to be the best setup for all my recordings. Now, if you can record at high res, if you can do 4K, then awesome. Your stuff's going to look way better than mine. But for HD videos, this is perfect. Now, if OBS is just too difficult for you to use, like not only difficult, but if it's just too beefy for your computer, if your computer is dying and struggling and and wheezing and coughing and heating up and you start seeing smoke coming out of the sides of the thing, you know, maybe get a new computer, but but I know a lot of you can't afford that. So if that's the case, definitely check out a couple of the tools that I'm gonna recommend. And I will link all of these tools in the description below for you to check out and download. Bandicam is actually a really, really great tool. So you can check it out. It is free, um, but it does leave a watermark. So, you know, if you don't care about the watermark, great, but you see there's a free download here and it is actually really optimal for recording videos. It actually does a really, really good job of videos. It does export as MP4s and you know, it's just, it's it, the file Mouse size just it's like the compression is really fast i've noticed it doesn't really burden your computer too much um it is really basic like i said but you know you are probably going to want to buy it to get rid of that watermark at the top i mean it's not a big deal if it has bandy cam on the screen because if you're starting out as a youtuber and you're like dv i have no other options just do it no one's going to care some someone's going to notice it but you're going to start getting some subs you're going to start getting views on your videos and at that point if you see that you know like things are looking pretty good things are looking up maybe you can afford the 40 dollar license or maybe you can maybe you know save up for a better computer or something. But in the meantime, you can use Bandicam. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, be sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button if you are new. And again, links to OBS are in the description so you can check that out and download this app for yourself. So I'll see you next time. Take it easy.